In the early Washington summer of 1999, an Australian intelligence officer committed suicide. You know, the central point here, the central point here is this is a terrible human tragedy. The central point here is that there is a widow and there are three sons. But Merv Jenkins' suicide was not simply a personal tragedy. Four Corners briefly reported his death a year ago. Since then, we've learned a lot more about the Jenkins story. He was angry because the CIA were upset that he wasn't passing over information that they really required. We've learned that in his last months, Jenkins was distressed by a secret rift between Australia and its chief ally, the US. During Canberra's most pressing foreign policy crisis since Vietnam, Jenkins had to cope with unhappy allies and confusing signals from his own bosses. In the end, he didn't cope. I mean, he was clearly under enormous stress. You, know, you could see it in his face. He was, uh, his eyes were sort of red-rimmed. Uh, you could just see the pressure that he was under. Tonight on Four Corners, the full story of a breakdown in intelligence sharing with the US and the breakdown of a man caught in the crossfire. The story of Lieutenant Colonel Merv Jenkins begins and ends here at the Royal Military College Duntroon. Here, the former intelligence officer refined his skills and philosophy. Royal Military College Duntroon has but a single purpose, to train officers for what it likes to call the profession of arms. At Duntroon, Jenkins was interviewed by chance for a Four Corners programme. What does honour mean to you exactly? Honour, loyalty, uh, integrity, uh, above all, uh, a respect within ourselves. And, uh, what do the words themselves mean to you? What does honour, for instance, mean to you? Uh, pride within myself for what I'm doing. Thirty years later, the career that had promised so much finished in a funeral at the church where he prayed as a cadet. Jenkins had developed into one of the military's best and brightest. Lower ranks and the top brass alike crammed the chapel. There were people at that funeral that I'd never even met because in the military, a spouse doesn't always get to meet everybody that the um, serving officer works with but it it was just wonderful I could not believe when I walked in there and the chapel was full with the help of Merv Jenkins wife Sandra and his mother Enid Four Corners has sifted through thousands of pages of freedom of information material and been given unique access to the former intelligence officers personal papers what's disclosed in one document is not disclosed in another for example Blocked out in one copy, yep. there in another copy. Yeah, right, right here. Yeah. Yes, yes. We've also talked to dozens of intelligence insiders and former colleagues in an attempt to unravel the puzzle of Jenkins' last days. As so often happens with suicide, his family may never fully understand the death. But our investigation raises real questions about the management of Australia's most important defence relationship. Five years ago, Jenkins got what should have been his dream posting. He came to Washington, the world capital of intelligence analysis, to liaise with the Americans. It was a new phase of a brilliant career as an intelligence professional. Jenkins had specialized in covert operations. Within two years of graduating from Duntroon, 
He took over as the head of the elite and highly secret group of commandos known as 660 Signal Troop, providing communications for ACES agents overseas. It comprised about 10 to 15 regular uh, soldiers who were very highly skilled uh, advanced radio operators and also had special forces skills. This is one one. Four mission back to over. As the years passed, Jenkins became deeply involved in specialised electronic warfare, which includes electronic games with enemy communications, jamming signals and sending out false messages. Jenkins became commanding officer of 72 Electronic Warfare Squadron based in Queensland. His job, to restructure the Army's involvement in electronic warfare. There were a lot of conflicting ideas about how that would be advanced and it was really going round and round in circles. But he got in there and he drove it, uh, went away for a couple of days and came back with a 40-page plan, uh, which was then then was the flagship for that uh, for that change over the uh, over the ensuing years. And we've worked together over many years. So... Noel Adams, a former electronic warfare commanding officer and intelligence analyst, knew Jenkins well and admired him. His soldiers worshipped him. Uh, he was very highly regarded by the troops. He, he was a great natural leader, and uh, he produced results. And uh, so he was you know, generally highly regarded. Now, in producing results, sometimes he got a few people with other vested interests offside, um, you know, because he did drive things fairly hard to get to get this uh, get 72 EW squadron properly on the road. I had a very interesting experience on this morning last year. As an officer, Jenkins liked to make plans. He forged a reputation as a strategic thinker, a Mr. Fix-It. His mind worked best with certainty, precision and control. In 1990, now a Lieutenant Colonel, Jenkins quit the military. Army rules and regulations had given him an environment in which he thrived, but he'd found a better job. It was still in high-tech intelligence, but it required him to become a Defence Department civilian. I think that when he was confronted with people in their pinstripe suits, he would have got very worried because they're talking a whole different language to, to what he's been brought up in, in, in military and, and defence intelligence and, and real questions of national security. The new job thrust him to the heart of a secret military agreement with the United States. The US was perfecting high-resolution satellite pictures the gems of the intelligence world. The United States has capabilities for producing a flood of data, uh, both in terms of satellite imagery as well as communication intercepts. And it's far more than the United States can hope to analyze. So what often happens is that it will share its take from these collection systems with its UK, USA partners, its, its uh, Australian Canadian, British, and New Zealand partners, and have them do part of the analysis. Jenkins was assigned to overhaul the satellite imagery strategy of the Defence Intelligence Organisation, the DIO. The general game plan is that um, we contribute to the overall intelligence pool, for want of a better description, of material from what we know best, which is our region. And um, in terms, and then we, it's called burden sharing is the official term that they use. And that then we benefit from the, uh, the labor of our partners and we're able to draw on the material that they provide on parts of the world that we can't cover. In 1996, Jenkins got the posting he wanted as DIO attaché for North America. His chief task was to improve the flow of information to the Americans who were complaining that Australia wasn't pulling its weight. The one thing that, um, Peter Zetti was his deputy. What level of We've been told that sometimes Americans weren't impressed with the level of input that Australia was giving to this pool. Some of the information wasn't being analysed. We hadn't done our job. It was a constant source of frustration and embarrassment, yes. When you say constant source of frustration and embarrassment, what do you mean by that? What's the, what's the example? Basically that um, 
we would be requested for um, intelligence material by our allies 